Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Clean That Up. Right now, I'm your host, the guy that looks like a girl. Today I'll be showing you guys why you should use subtractive EQ to clean up your sounds. Uh, that way they sound better in your song. Let's get started. Alright, so I found a great song to demonstrate how Subtractive EQ can clean up a mix. It's a beat I made on stream a few weeks ago. If you want to check out my streams, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 12 p.m. PST. Tuesday and Thursday are beat making, and Saturday is music feedback streams, where you submit your music and I review it. So make sure to check that out. Let's listen to it real quick. As you can hear, the sample is overpowering essentially everything in the track. Um, and that's because we haven't done any EQ to it and it's quite compressed. So it's very loud in the mix. So some ways you can fix this are by doing EQ. Today we'll be using EQ8. I would I normally like to use Fab Filter, but um, not everyone has VSTs. So we're gonna do this with something almost anyone can use if you have Ableton. You're gonna wanna make sure your project is organized. That way it's easy to find what you need to and uh, make the changes you want to on each track. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna drag EQ8 onto the sample. And um, we're probably gonna wanna cut out some of the low end. We can actually just listen to it, we can solo it and see what we need to cut out from it. So it sounds like there's a bass in it. We're definitely gonna wanna cut that out. Maybe bring in the, the bass, our bass to do you hear how it combines with it? Just until it sounds good together. Now you can hear, it made it easier for the bass to be heard now. Insane, right? Maybe uh, dial back the settings a little bit. Perfect. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do them separately. That way it's easier for us to look at. This is gonna be the bass. So you can get an idea of what we're doing for each instrument. So this is us cutting out room for the bass. That's probably all we're gonna need to cut out for the bass. Maybe a little more, but we can, we can just combine that with the kick. We'll just do the kick and the bass here, actually. We'll do bass and kick. All right, now we're gonna wanna make a few dips for the kick. Let's uh, let the kick come through and hear that. So it sounds like we're gonna to wanna to cut around somewhere between 100 to 300 hertz or so, maybe 500 even. So we're gonna to wanna to enable a point on this EQ8 and we're gonna make a dip, maybe about five decibels. So we're gonna straighten up the cue quite a bit. So it's pretty narrow. Imagine how narrow the frequency range of a kick is. We're just, that's basically what we're doing. We're just cutting a little bit room there for it. And so 700 hertz is too high. We're gonna bring it down to Maybe like 200 hertz for this one right here. Or, yeah, like 200. As you can hear there, the kick is cutting through at that frequency range now of about 200 hertz. It's cutting through the sample and it's, it's very audible. Without it, let's hear it without it and with it. So without it. Let's hear it with it. Much more audible. It's almost too audible, if you get what I'm saying. So we could dial back the scale here a little bit if we want to, but we'll leave it for now. If anything, we'll just do that later on. Okay, now we're gonna use another EQ8 and we're gonna cut out room for the snare. If you aren't sure where they're clashing, you can make it more obvious for yourself by boosting that area, but be careful because you, uh, you can hurt your ears. It sounds like it's somewhere around 1.7 Hertz and also around four Hertz. See, like that fucking hurt. So we're gonna cut out a little bit around there. Maybe sweep a little bit to find the sweet spot. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with another one. Now the snare is much more audible without even having to turn it up too much.
Hey you, do you need affordable mixing and mastering? Need it back within a few days? Free revisions? People ask me, how do I do it? And I'm beginning to wonder that myself. Bloom-audio.com, the world's most affordable mixing and mastering. All right, and we can do this for one more thing. Can you guess what it is? It's, it's the hi-hat. Oh, great guess, dude. So I'm gonna take this sample now. I'm gonna put another EQ8 on it. And this one I'm gonna name hi-hat. And I'm going to get rid of all these extra points. And I'm going to, basically we're gonna make a dip around 5K and or 10K, roughly. We're gonna find the specific spots that sound sweet to us and go from there. But basically we're trying to cut out some room for this hi-hat so that it, it pokes through a little nicer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten up this cue a little bit here and I'm gonna sweep to about five or 10K and find an area where I can hear it well. Let's say somewhere around 6K. Then I'm gonna do another one at 12K. I'm gonna kind of somewhat copy the settings. There we go. I'm gonna dial back the scale a little bit. That way it's not as uh, obvious. Cause I feel like the, the especially the hi-hat there is poking through a bit too much actually now. You can actually overdo these settings, by the way. That's very possible. So always be weary of that. And that's why the scale option is a great tool as you can see right here. And then you may notice some things are still not quite cutting through. So we could duplicate the snare and hi-hat subtractive EQs over to the bass. I think, in my opinion, this is like a, a 400 IQ move because you're saving, you're saving yourself quite a bit of time here. And um, I mean, who doesn't like to save time, right? As you can hear now, the instruments are all coming through quite clearly, and that's all thanks to quite a bit of subtractive EQ. It's actually not that much work once you get used to it and kind of understand the way it works, but you can use this to, to help cut out room for vocals in, in a sample or um, some sort of melody, for instance, or you can use it to cut drums in, in a synth like we did here or in a bass. Anytime you feel like you can't hear a sound cutting through another sound, Using subtractive EQ is a good idea. That's it for this video. I'm your host, Weaver Beats. Hopefully you guys learned something about subtractive EQ today and why it's a great idea to use in your songs. Hopefully this helps you clean up your songs and show me your songs. I, I have feedback streams every Saturday, 12 p.m. PST, on my YouTube or Twitch. Check out my Patreon if for exclusive content or to just help your boy out. Make sure to follow my Twitter for updates. Tune in next time when I render a video while recording a video. Wow, wow, that's so fucking funny. Wow. Shout out to my patrons. You're now listening to air. The link to check out his music is down in the description. I want you to put on your game face shirt and go subscribe to Weaver Beats. Because if you don't subscribe to Weaver Beats... What are you doing on the computer? Uh...